<laughs> hey YouTubers and friends, you know who I am? I might know who you are. Well, I'm over at Jake's house and this episode of In the Shed and in with Ed is going to be at, in Jake's shed. This is his shop here at his parents' house. We're going to weld, make a rock crusher. I acquired this stuff from the workshop Friday. Um, I did this with the the pestle part on my sore thumb, which is in a very early video a few years ago. But we're going to weld this onto the plate. We're going to drill a hole here and then weld that shaft onto there and then I could use it with my air hammer I have at home. So here in a little bit I don't have a welder at my house anymore I returned it to Ricky's so we're gonna weld this all the way around and do that and then I'll be able to crush rocks and look for values but we'll be back in a jiffy so that's yeah. okay. Well, Are you gonna need me for you're gonna let me to test it real quick. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll test right you. on your metal. You can go in, Joe. Um, you can yeah. Are you watching me? Say hi to the people around the world, Joe. Hello. Oh, come on. Be more sociable than that. <laughs> well, that's Joe, Jake's brother. You remember him from the other episode. <laughs> but. <laughs> Look good where it's at. No. Oh no, is it centered? Close enough. Well, right now he's just tacking it in place. He'll give it three, four, five tacks, and then he'll weld completely around, sealing the bottom. As you see, that's a real thick base and fairly thick pipe. The pipe's like quarter inch thick. Jake's busy welding away on the rock crusher. You've seen that a little. It's coming along. It's going to take a little bit. Okay, well, Jake, ah, it is. 
Well, <laughs> we use this small bit and then a bigger bit to drill a hole for there. And there's our petzl for rock pressure. And we'll weld it up, Jake rather, not Will, he'll weld it up there around there. And like I was saying earlier, I will hook up to my hammer. I did this a few years ago in Washington and I've seen another guy on YouTube doing it, did it also. Great minds think alike. Okay, well, I got my compressor back, and now you see I got the hammer part or part of the mortar and pestle um, hooked up to my air gun, much like um, High Plains Prospector had did the same thing like I was saying earlier with my sore thumb I have back in Washington I made it so I could use my air hammer on it and now I made my own you saw the straps saw Jake welding it Jake painted it up for me I had a problem with the paint on the pedestal part um, that hooks up to my air hammer um, so I took all that paint off, like I said earlier, I did send a, a text to Jake telling him not to do it, but he read it too late. But, I'm gonna, you can use it on all types of minerals, um, or specimens, like what I have been crushing up is a sandstone that's the bedrock by the area I dredge and I took it down to a consistency of pretty much flour and I'll pan that out here in a jiffy and see if I get any color out of it. Um, I have my own theory on the origins of where that sandstone came from. You could also use it on this conglomerate, which is actually an ancient sedimentary rock. Some out in the southwest would call it caliche, um, but it's all over. It's a conglomerate. Um, those that don't know, see all those little rounded rocks? It's like a natural cement, all cemented and hardened together over time. I have several specimens of that from Central Ohio that I plan on crushing up and seeing if there's any gold locked up in it. Um, some more sandstone specimens that I've picked up. And when you're dredging, rocks like this that can fit up your nozzle can be a clog, a big time clog situation uh, at your venturi of your jet log or somewhere in your tube where it can kick up and get lodged like so. So you really want to be careful about these flat rocks. They could be make really good skimmer rocks but they're not good for going up your dredge mounds. And then I have a I believe it's igneous. It's an intrusive, um, intrusive igneous rock. It looks like it has a lot of mica in it and um, some pyrite and stuff, but you never know. It could contain gold or like these quartz 
piece rock quartz rocks that I have picked up in farm fields here in Ohio or along the stream bed. You can crush those up and see if they have any values in it. But I'll show you how it's working. Um, here's a sedimentary sandstone that this stuff came out of. Um, I have a really nice specimen of it in my sh downstairs in my computer room, but see this really dark um, sedimentary rock here. It's a real, real dark sandstone. Then there's a rusty one and a real blonde. Um, they can make all kinds of neat formations and stuff. Much like um, this one here, you can, if you can see, there's that dark sedimentary layer and then the blondes. Um, you can crush this up, see what's inside it. That's right, I need to plug in my air hose. Be right back. Okay, here I am. Let's see how this baby works. I know it works already good, uh, good already, because I've used it. But here we are. My mortar, my pestle, my air gun, my shield. Um, you can now have stuff come up uh, back and hit you. So I made the shield out of TPO roofing membrane. I need a little more water.
Okay, let's see what we get. Stratify it really good. Look how dirty that water is. I'm not cleaning the concentrates like I normally do. I probably should because look how dirty that is. Let's see how many magnetics are in it. Oh, very little magnetic black sands. or some, but not a lot. Okay, let's pan it out see what we get. Try pinning that down more. I'm not seeing no values so far. Okay, well, now I know, unless the color's really fine and I need to get it, use something else to get it out of there. think I'll crush up some of this rock, quartz rock. That looks pretty good. Until then, you all have a good one and happy prospecting. And thank you again my YouTube YouTubers and friends from around the world for viewing another episode of Ed in the Shed.